All right, so here's my second attempt after uh, YouTube blocked my video from um, because I used some other videos in it. So we will no longer use any videos um, during my lecture. Instead, I will include the links on the PowerPoint so you can view it at your own pleasure. Okay. Um, before I begin, I will talk about uh, the exam really quickly. Uh, as you can see, the average was 90%, which is really high. So you you did very well on the test. I'm, I'm pleased. I'm uh, glad that um, everyone was able to do well. And I hope uh, moving forward, I'll keep this. And I hope that next time you do as well. And um, I you know this is a hard time and I will keep on um, trying to make it easy for you. So in that regard, I am now doing lectures using YouTube so you can view it at your leisure um, through your phone, phone or any other device you use. Um, on another note, I will also be making it, uh, I won't, I will no, lo no longer take points off of late assignments. So in turn in assignments when you can, they will be due officially on the Friday um, after uh, I initially give my lecture um, or the next Friday so uh, at 11.59 so if you have any questions about that let me know send me an email and today we're going to be discussing primates and uh, primate behavior we'll also do a little bit of taxonomy and that's lab 9 so uh, what we'll be focused on is labs uh, 10 and 11. Do a little bit of 9, but 9, you will not have to do any exercises from it. So you won't do lab 9. Only do labs 10 and 11. So moving on. Before, really quickly. Oh, also, before I begin, I do have two cats, and they might be curious and poke their heads in every once in a while. So just be prepared for that if that's the case. Okay. Now that my phone's on silent. So... Really quick, classification, um, why do we do this? Is we place organism in the context of close and distant relatives so we can see how different species are related. Um, so levels of classification, briefly, are kingdom, phylum, class, or order, family, genus, and species. And here we have our classification for ourselves, for human beings. And so um, what we'll be really focused on is genus and species when we talk about primates. We'll also talk about families and orders to a certain extent, but that's what we'll be focused on today. Okay, so scientific name. So this is what I want you to do, use for your test. So, there we go. So, a scientific name is binomial, which means two parts. So it's genus and species. Examples, uh, for example, Homo sapiens, right? Um, so... To do this, to do a proper binomial, you need to have um, the genus uh, capitalized. So the first word capitalized, second word is not capitalized. And when you're typing it, uh, make sure it's italicized. But what I will also do, you can abbreviate, um, such as instead of saying homo erectus, do h dot erectus. Okay, and I will accept that one, especially when you're dealing with like Australopithecus afarensis. All right, yeah, Australopithecus is a large word so for future reference when you're dealing with this I will accept the abbreviation okay so so what is a species oh, uh, okay let me see let me get my there we go that's better okay so what is a species species are any a uh, group of organisms that can breed together and produce viable offspring. This is a definition we'll be using in this course and other other definitions, but for this, this is what we're using. So viable means living, fertile offspring. So an example um, is humans mating with other humans equals more humans, babies. Okay, but an example of a non-fertile offspring is um, a donkey mating with a horse. Here produces a mule. Mule. While it is a living organism, is not viable. It is infertile and it cannot be uh, reproduced. So the donkeys and horses, even though they can mate and produce a mule, are separate species because a mule is not viable. Yeah. 
Okay, so what we're talking about, this whole classification system is based on taxonomy and phylogeny. So taxonomy is the science of classification and nomenclature, so categorizing and naming species. And phylogeny is a system that indicates the evolution relationship uh, among organisms. So phylogenic tree is shown here, okay? So it shows how species are related, at what time point did they break off and form a separate species. So what's important is the physical traits that we can see how things are related. And there's two different types. First are analogous. Uh, so these are shared because of a common adaptation, such as adaptation to swimming in the ocean or flying in the air. Uh, homologous uh, characters are shared because there's this common ancestor. And so this is why, um, as we'll get into, how, why we have five digits and grasping fingers similar to a chimpanzee. So as I said, analogous characters are functionally similar. So here we have um, three types of wings that we can see are functionally similar because they are adapted to flying. And we see a uh, butterfly, bat, and bird wings and how similar they are, yet they um, are different. So you see uh, the bird has three fingers and a bat has five. So that means that they're functionally similar but they don't have a common ancestor, okay? So that's important. While homologous characters, such as hands shown here, are similar to, to common ancestors. So all mammals have five digits, but in some they have been fused, such as horses, their five digits have been fused into one. So we can see here how a chimp hand, similar to our hand because we have a common ancestor, and same thing with our hands, we have five digits similar to a uh, cat because they have a, co a similar common ancestor, the first mammal to us. Okay, so why study non-human primates, right? So getting into earlier how we're interested in the human experience. Why um, are we at the stage we are? What makes us human? So to do this, we have to study our ancestors and figure out what behaviors we got from them. So that's important. And show came home to me today, uh, the other day when I was watching Tiger King. I know that's going viral right now, but um, at the end of the show, he had two chimps that he kept locked up, separated from each other by a cage for 10 years. And as soon as these two chimps saw each other in um, a habitat where they could touch each other, they started hugging each other and wouldn't let go. And so, Tiger King realized that he deprived these chimps from this contact for 10 years. It was only one moment of remorse in the entire film. So this shows why it's important to understand our ancestors and to have empathy for them so we can move forward and be able to help ourselves and help others, right? Okay, so... We can understand the, like I said, the biological context of our species and what distinguishes primates from mammals, so morphological comparisons, behavioral comparisons, understand our evolutionary past, and learn about our anatomy through primate anatomy and our intelligence through primate intelligence and diet and behavior and so forth. Okay. So what is the primate? Primate is the order of, uh, in the order of mammals, so what all mammals have in common is mammary glands, so they produce milk and they have fur. They also develop a fetus in the womb. They don't lay eggs. And they give birth to live young. Found in tropical and subtropical areas around the world. So any member of the group of animals, that primates are technically any group of uh, animals that includes human beings, apes, and monkeys. Okay. Also tarsiers, lorises, and lemurs. And we'll talk about that in a second. So our taxonomy... All primates uh, share these physical traits. So all primates have a grasping hands, a posable thumb, five digits in hands and feet, nails rather than claws, clavicles, which is important for brachiation, which we'll talk about in a second, and closed eye orbits, forward-facing eyes to have uh, better depth perception and grasping abilities. So unlike horses who have side-facing eyes because when they're running, they have to see behind them, see if any predators are coming up on them. We are more interested in what's in front of us. We don't care about what's behind us. We care about that branch we're trying to get so that we can go grab that and um, to our fullest extent without falling down, okay? So to do that, 
we also have a reduce now. Okay, so most primates are arboreal, and most of uh, the time is spent in trees. But uh, so that we are uh, primates are adapted to living in densely forested environments. There are a couple that are not, but we'll talk about them later. They have generalized diets, so eating a variety of foods. So, for example, chimps are omnivores, and they eat everything from monkeys to insects to nuts to fruit to leaves okay so due to their diet um like us right we have generalized dentition so we have four types of teeth if you remember from the, the exam incisors canines premolars and molars so primates have these type of teeth too and another type that we'll talk about in a second okay so most primates are diurnal they're active in daytime they're social but some are not we'll talk about the uh, nocturnal ones in a second um they have a dependence on learned behavior, so they're very social and they learn from each other, essentially. So the uniparous, which means they give birth to one offspring at a time in most cases, and they have extended juvenile periods with the strong mother and offspring bonds, similar to why we're very attached to our children. Okay. That's driving me nuts. Okay. So anatomical similarities, we all have opposable thumbs, tactile pads, right? So your pads on your fingers. Um, nails instead of claws. Color vision. So this is a uh, trade-off uh, between enhanced vision and depth perception. It expands the smelling and hearing so we can see better than like a dog. The dog can definitely smell and hear better than we can. Um, so we think that this uh, developed because we like fruit. So we wanted uh, the riper fruit, the better. So we were adapted to being very visual and seeing color. Um, also, another side theory is that um, we wanted the ripest fruit because we wanted uh, fermented beverages. So from our earliest ancestors, our earliest primate ancestors, we wanted to get drunk. Interesting little theory. So two ways uh, to categorize primate taxonomy. First is evolutionary taxonomy, and that um, split into two suborders to emphasize subjectivity, um, complementary nature of living organisms. So this is prosimians and anthropoids. Okay, cladistics, which we will be doing, uh, primates are split into two suborders that emphasize objectivity, so physical characteristics and genetic similarities. So this is strepsirines and haplorines. Okay, so we'll be getting into that. Uh, we'll be getting into first the um, strepsirines and then the haplorines. Okay, so here's our family tree, and we see, according to cladistics approach, how early the breakoff is between the strepsirines and haplorines. Okay, and you will be required to create something similar to show our uh, the phylogenetic tree of our ancestry from apes to now in uh, short assignment three. So remember this. Remember phylogeny. Okay, so here are the differences between the uh, different primates, uh, the di different dental patterns and so forth that you'll be used to classify the different species. So uh, this is for you. I'm not gonna go into this in detail here, but this is for your reference, okay? So here's another phylogenetic tree. And so this is what you will be doing. And this shows um, where our different ancestors branched off from us, okay? And you can see um, tarsiers and lemurs are separated from monkeys and uh, our anthropoids, and monkeys are separated from apes, and you have lesser apes and then greater apes, and we're considered a greater ape. Okay, so lorises, they're strips of rinds. Um, so these are lorises, potos, and galagos, so bush babies. And here we have a loris here. Right, cute little guy. Um, they're nocturnal, so they're the one that are nocturnal and tend to have large eyes taking as much light as possible. They have a post-orbital bar, which loop a bone that encloses the eye, so it's not fully enclosed, right? So this is to allow bigger eyes and let more light in. Um, they're more reliant on smell than vision, okay? So they have a rhinarium, which is a damp pad on the snout to allow them to smell better, and their diet's mostly insects, and they have a 2133 dental formula with something called a dental comb. So this is what a dental comb looks like here. Um, so this is allows them to uh, eat sap and also to um, dig into bark to get the sap and to get insects. Okay. Okay. 
So lemurs are closely related to lorises, and they're only found on Madagascar. They're a very diverse group, some are nocturnal, like uh, lorises and eat insects, while others are more diverse diet and uh, have, are diurnal. So they also have post-orbital bars, less reliant on vision compared to uh, monkeys and apes. And they're, like you said, more dependent on smell, the lawn snouts, the rhinariums, and 2133 with a dental comb. Okay, so there's a video on eye here if you want to see more about the eye and how weird he is. For copyright, I'm not going to click on the video. So Taurus years um, are in Southeast Asia. They're small and eat insects primary and are prim primarily nocturnal. Um, more genetically and anatomically related to anthropoids, okay, like we said, corn cladistics approach. There's no dental comb, no rhinarium. They have closed bony orbits instead of post orbital bar. Okay. So unique is that they have upper tentition of two one three three and lower of one one three three. Um, extremely large eyes and can turn their head almost 360 degrees. Um, and they have a fused tibia and fibula allowing for greater leaping power. So we'll have more videos on this uh, next week when we go into uh, morphology. Okay, so anthropoids are monkeys and apes, okay? Tend to be larger and relatively bigger brain than the uh, strepsirines. Uh, and the, uh, what, what did we just have? The tarsiers. Mostly diurnal, and they rely on better vision than smell. So they're more vision have more visual acuity than um, the other primates. So they have uh, color vision and full bony enclosure of their eyes. So here we have three different types. Um, we have capuchins, baboons, and gorillas. So now we can also divide between New World and Old World monkeys. Okay. Um, so New Worlds inhabit the Americas. They um, have broad noses, nostrils face the side with a white septum, and they have three premolars in each quadrant of the mouth. Okay, um, So they have a different dental pattern than us. They have a... Where would that be? Two, one, three, three. Okay, But Old World primates, so catarines, these are monkeys and apes that inhabit Africa or Asia. They have narrow noses, nostrils face downward, and a narrow septum. So that's the, the separates uh, the nose ca nasal cavities. They have two premolars in each quadrant. So all old world monkeys and apes have two, one, two, three dental pattern. So it shows we're uh, related more to old world primates than we are to new world primates. Okay. New world monkeys are living central. Okay, let's just get through that. There we go. Show all the cute pictures. Okay, so they live in central. New world monkeys live in central and South America. They're diverse, mostly arboreal and diurnal, uh, but owl monkeys are nocturnal. Their diet: um, smaller monkeys rely on insects or tree gums, uh, while larger uh, species rely on uh, more fruits and leaves. Okay, some have some. Have a prehensile tail which gives the ability to grasp things almost like a fifth limb. So here we have a spider monkey. It's doing that. In the last slide, we also had a spider monkey. And you could see the difference in a prehensile tail. You see how this spider monkey's grasping onto the limb here. And um, this baboon is an old world monkey, does not have a prehensile tail, so he cannot grasp with his tail. And the smallest new world monkey is a tamarin who uh, has twins instead of just one offspring um, and is polyandrous. So that means their group consists of one female and multiple males, which is interesting, right? One of the few species that does that. So overall monkeys have a dental formula of 2, 1, 2, 3, like we said. They live in Africa and Asia, generally diurnal. Um, live in large social groups, so very large social groups in the case of baboons, which are up here. All right, so they have blophodont molars, parallel ridges um, on the molars, and they have what's known as ischial uh, callosities. So these are special patches of skin on the rear, and these will um, are e uh, allow them to sit easier, give them a little bit more padding, but also signify um, that uh, a male is fully um, at repro uh, can reproduce and also um, that a female is an estrus. So we'll get into that a little bit later when we talk about sexual behavior. And most have tails, okay? Apes do not. 
So oral monkeys can be divided into colobines and cercopithecines. So colobines are the linger and colobus monkey. Most still live in Asia, but a few are found in Africa. So medium sized with long tails and have complex stomachs, special adaptations for leaf eating. So cercopithecines are, are mostly baboons and macaques. Okay, so here's a colobus here. You see his little French coat. And here we have a macaque. This one's very famous. He's called Naruto. He's the um, selfie monkey, okay? So he is a macaque. And they're usually larger than colobines and found mostly in Africa. Um, and they're shorter tailed with special cheek pouches to store food. So apes are found only in Central Africa and Southeast Asia. So they have the 2123 dental formula I told you about. They have catarine with the nose face downward and narrow septum. So they have a more projecting face compared to our prognathic face compared to old world monkeys. Um, so they have an even larger brain size uh, relative to body size. Diurnal. And they have adaptations for sweeting in trees, brachiation, and flexible shoulder joint. So that's how we can do this, right? Rotate our shoulders around. So they also have. Uh, so they like a tail and have Wi Fi molars. So here we have the Bolophodon. You see how there's parallel ridges. And here is a um, eight molar. And you see it has a Y pattern with like five different uh, separations. So that's the Wi Fi molar. Okay. That's how you can tell if you only have dentition the difference between. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Apes and old world monkeys. Oops. So the lesser apes, gibbons and siamings, they're tellus, and uh, gibbons are monogamous uh, pair bond, so that means they're um, they mate for life. They're low sexual dimorphism. Uh, they swing through the tree, so that means they they brachiate, so move back and forth. Okay. Um, they're found mostly in Southeast Asia, and it's because they brachiate and they're primarily arboreal. They have long arms and other apes. And so here's two videos. One is a gibbon brachiating. Uh, the other is a siamine vocalization because they you see these throat pet, this throat sac here. It allows them to have very complex vocalizations where they can have two um, notes at once because they're mostly, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're mostly isolated. They live on their own, but uh, they like to communicate over large distances with their throat sacs. So very interesting video. I highly recommend it. Okay, so great apes, we have first orangutans, extremely sexual dimorphic, so they have the uh, alpha males have flanges on their face, as shown here, right? So that means that he is the big boy. Um, there's diurnal slow climbers and primary solitary, okay? Um, so only adolescent male, uh, only dominant males have these flanges, females and adolescent males do not. So they're opportunistic foragers, but their diet is mostly fruit, and they're one of the most intelligent uh, species of apes. Okay, so gorillas are the largest, right? They live in family groups consisting of a dominant adult male and several adult females and their children, so polygynous uh, social structure. They're shy and herbivores, and um, they're terrestrial knuckle walkers. So you see here this gentleman here, he's walking on his knuckles and his shown here okay so they locomote primarily on the ground by walking on their knuckles so our closest ancestors are chimps and bonobos so um, both live in equatorial africa and bonobos are found in uh, Dem democratic republic of congo um, variable diet so they have fruit leaves nuts insects and small animals including uh, monkeys which is interesting and each other so they um Chimps will cannibalize other chimpanzees, especially um, infants. So. Uh, so they have highly variable diets with, a, oh, I said that, a large social groups. So multi-male, multi-female. And bonobos tend to have larger linear bodies than chimps. And so here's an example of a bonobo. He's also uh, darker in complexion than this chimpanzee over here. Okay, so humans, we are also great apes with limited uh, sexual dimorphism adapted to walking on two legs. And we also have large social groups, right? So primates are very intelligent and they have culture. So learned behaviors that's passed down from generation to generation through memory. Okay, so they can remember. Uh, they also uh, can be aggressive and they, like I said, learn behavior and they have examples of tool use shown here with this guy creating a... a stick for termite fishing and um, this 
older chimp teaching uh, infant how to crush uh, nuts to get the nut meat. Um, so you see this is an example of learned behavior. So here's two videos on primate intelligence that you can watch at your own leisure. So also, we're now we'll get into behavior. So there's two primary categories, affiliative and aggressive behavior, and we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. So affiliative behavior, so it can be nonverbal, which is hand-holding and grooming, and also vocalizations, so to show contentment or to warn of uh, predators or any other harmful agent. Um, there's also examples of males uh, hunting together in packs and patrolling their territory, which we'll get into in the uh, next slide too. Um, so an example of this is grooming. Grooming promotes social bonds and good health, and uh, lower ranking individuals typically groom higher ranking individuals. So aggressive behavior is the most common is threat displays, uh, hair stands up, throwing things with loud vocalization. So yawning and displaying the teeth. So when a chimp smiles at you, doesn't mean he's happy to see you, it means he's being aggressive. You did something to piss him off. So don't go near a chimp that's smiling. Okay. Patrol, uh, so they also, um, male groups will patrol their borders and violently attack rival members. Um, some say it's a very early form of warfare. Um, there's an interesting video at the end that uh, you can watch that will have more be important of that. There's also cases of infanticide, which uh, killing infants to induce females to become more receptive to um, reproduction. And so this is because of lactor lactational aminora, which uh, means is a temporary postnatal infertility due to weaning. So if you kill, if uh, invading alpha male um, kills a uh, infant of a female, he can mate with her much sooner than he would if that uh, infant was alive. Okay, so this all deals with all this; these different things deal with ecology. So we're looking into how these behaviors are adapted to different environments. Okay, so social structure and dynamics are impacted by food availability caused by the environment, and so it causes a different and and risk of predation. So it causes different social structures to be adapted to this. So primates who insects or rely mainly on fruit tend to live in smaller groups since larger groups require more food resources, so there's less to go around. Um, chimpanzees rely on something called fission fusion. Okay, So this is groups fission during the day to collect resources on their own, so spread out, but at night they come together for safety um, and also in cases of like hunting they'll uh, form coalitions and they'll uh, any type of activity to get resources that requires more coordination, they'll come together and they'll, they'll hunt. So primates uh, with abundant resources such as leaves tend to live in larger groups and this is because of strength and there's more to go around, right? Okay, so primates have complex social hierarchies with higher status males typically have better fitness. Um, this is can be very complex such as the case in chimpanzees which have a very um, complex pecking order okay because this is their multi male multi female so both males and females have their own hierarchies so males often form in, in chimpanzees especially males often form coalitions to improve rank and can also overthrow a dominant male um so they also form alliances between each other right to, oh let me groom you oh yeah we're best friends right we will help each other out they have each other's backs literally okay so the different uh, primary types of social organization are solitary, monogamy, which is one male, one female, polyandry, which is multi-males, one female, like with the tamarins, right? Polygyny, like, like gorillas, one male, multiple females, are also uh, multiple male, multiple females, so that's chimpanzees, right? And there's also a bachelor group, so these are roaming groups of males who are looking to overthrow a dominant male and take over their harem. Okay. So sexual behavior, males compete with males for access to females, and females also compete with females for access to resources for their offspring. So this is sexual selection at work, right? And it leads to uh, more colorful males with uh, larger canines for fighting. The boons and chimpanzees also have, uh, uh, females have uh, extra swellings which advertise receptivity and fertility, okay? So this is the result of living in multi-male, multi-female large groups. 
Um, and in terms of sexual selection too, and sexual competition is chimps will also have very large testes um, to um, outcompete uh, other chimps sperm, okay? It's in sperm competition is what it's called. Okay, so there's also diverse uh, sexual behavior in uh, bonobos, for example, where they are known as lovers because they solve everything through sex. So if anyone's pissed at each other, they'll just um, have sex and get it all out there, okay? So it reduces aggression and reinforces social bonds. Okay, so communication and culture. Now, moving on a little bit further, um, calls can be multi-purpose, so mark territory, say, hey, this is mine, or warn intruders, you better back off or I'm coming at you, and alarm calls saying, like, oh, here's a snake, it's coming at us, or here's a hawk. Um, so non-human primate culture, like we said, is uh, group-specific learned behavior, so uh, creating tools and it's passed down uh, through their offspring. So there's a video of that, too, there. Okay, and here's more food for thought. These two videos that I won't show them now, but this is for your viewing later that um, talk about warfare and origins of it and also origins of empathy and shows the similarities between us and chimpanzees. So it's very interesting videos. Okay, so today do labs 10 and 11. Don't do skip lab 9. Use the appendix for all exercises. And I also, for lab 11, um, I have a video that's linked on Canvas. Um, that you will view to watch uh, gorillas for different behaviors. So record all the different interactions you see, such as grooming, um, aggressive behavior, and so forth. And follow the instructions for that. Do next week is Labs 10 and 11. All right, thank you for uh, watching this, and let me know if you have any questions, and stay safe.